So, a local bank account is essential if you plan to live in the Philippines long term. Today, we will be going through two of the most foreign friendly banks in the Philippines. However, as there are several banks nationwide, I will share with you some vital information that you need to know about banking in the Philippines. BDO is one of the largest banks in the Philippines, and the good news is, is that they are open for foreign customers. However, BDO requires foreign customers to have an alien certificate of registration card, a passport that must be in English, and completed bank forms. In addition, other documentation such as your tax identification number and driving license are recommended but are not always essential. With a basic account, you will need a minimum of 2,000 pesos to open up the account. Naturally, the requirements and the minimum initial deposit will depend upon what type of account account that you are opening. I've noticed that branches operate very differently depending on the location. Some branches require foreigners to be living in the Philippines for at least six months, while other branches do not have this requirement. Security Bank is slightly more convenient due to its online application form which considers foreign customers. Once you have completed the form, you will need to upload a form of identification and free signatures on a white piece of paper. After this, you will receive a callback, usually within a few days, where the customer service agent will ask you for additional details to set up your account. Most accounts have an initial deposit of 5,000 pesos, but the maintaining balance will often depend on the account. So here is some extra information that will help you with banking options and payments in the Philippines. Some banks can be slightly wary about opening a bank account in the Philippines for foreigners. This is a especially true in more remote areas and smaller banks. Therefore, having some extra information such as the source of your funds, additional identification and taking a Filipino with you can make the world of difference. Another piece of information is that opening a bank in the Philippines is not your only option. Many expats use a service called WISE which is commonly known as TransferWISE. Sending money in and out of the Philippines is extremely cost effective and convenient when using WISE, so I've added the link in the description below. One other option available for foreigners who are looking to open a bank account in the Philippines is to use an international banking group such as China Bank or Australia and New Zealand Banking Group. So it seems that healthcare is a popular subject, so today we will be looking at the options for foreigners and retirees in the Philippines. Towards the end, I will be answering some common questions, but if there is a question that I haven't answered or you wish me to dive into a subject, please let me know in the comments. Oh, by the way, I've added some additional links in the description with comparisons, terms and other information. So let's have a look at the first option, Feel Health. If you've never come across PhilHealth before, the program is the National Health Insurance System for the Philippines, which aims to offer affordable health insurance services for citizens. PhilHealth has accepted foreign members to its program for a few years now. The current terms state that foreigners who have a retirement visa or an alien certificate of registration card can apply. If you have a retirement visa, the annual premium contribution rate is set at 15,000 pesos. However, if you have an alien certificate of registration card, the annual premium contribution rate will be set at 17,000 pesos. Some insurance plans will cover you if your spouse is Filipino, however, PhilHealth does not cover this. Therefore, as a foreigner looking for health insurance in the Philippines, you will need to become a member individually. To become a member of PhilHealth, you will need to visit one of the local insurance offices, complete the member registration form, pay the contribution fee, and finally set up any future payments which can be monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, or annually. AXA Medical Plan AXA has three main options, critical illness cover, medical coverage, and health and investment. 
Looking through the terms and conditions, for foreigners who are in the Philippines, it appears that the most suitable service would be the general medical coverage. However, depending on your circumstances, you may find that other options are more suitable. However, for the purpose of this video, we will be focusing on the most relevant, which is general medical cover. This premium plan covers members from 500,000 pesos to 5 million pesos. AXA is one of the more expensive plans. However, it does offer many features and and ease of access for foreigners who are looking for health insurance in the Philippines. Sun Life Fit and Well. The most common insurance package with Sun Life is Sun Life Fit and Well. This plan offers critical insurance and life insurance benefits until the age of 100. The terms and conditions state that they can diagnose 64 major critical illnesses, 34 minor illnesses and 10 specific cancer conditions within the plan. Similar to AXA, Prices do differ person to person, however, they do have many online advisors and also several offices. Foreign members will even need to have a retirement visa, an ACR card or a work permit to apply. Cigna. Cigna is best if you seek health insurance in the Philippines before arriving in the country. Cigna offer four plans in total. These include silver, gold, platinum and close care. Silver, gold and platinum plans cover worldwide insurance excluding the US. However, the close care plan covers country of residence plus country of nationality. As a 65 year old, I was quoted $350 per month, so it is expensive. However, the monthly price decreases slightly if you are willing to cost share. So now let's take a look at some common questions. Are there other health insurance companies in the Philippines for foreigners? Yes, there are. For the purpose of this video, I emailed all the providers which I could find which did not have information about foreign membership. Some companies replied with a quotation, but their price was too high for the service that they offered. Others simply did not email back. So today's list were the companies with either the best service or the best price. Should I purchase insurance before moving to the Philippines? There are pros and cons to both, but if you are looking to save money, then purchasing locally when you're in the Philippines will always be the best option. Can I use my health plan as an investment while I'm not using it? Yes, absolutely. Some companies have investment options. This is a big topic, so please let me know in the comments if you wish me to cover this in more detail. Is health insurance mandatory? Health insurance is not mandatory, but with the ongoing pandemic and other developments, there may be some kind of coverage needed in the future. But in terms of health insurance only, this is not mandatory. How do I start? With the majority of health plans in the Philippines, quotations are available online. From there, you can sign up on the web or visit an office similar to the process of Phil Health. So this is one of the biggest questions asked when moving to the Philippines. Should you invest your earnings into a condominium or instead rent? As somebody who has studied real estate in the Philippines for many years, I can tell you that purchasing real estate is likely a good idea as long as certain conditions are met. The thing is, many YouTubers and bloggers will tell you that buying a condominium in the Philippines is a bad idea, but this isn't always the case. However, I would stress that it's not as financially profitable as it may seem from the outside, so there are a few categories that we need to talk about. The first area of discussion is how will you be financing this condo? As we know, with real estate, you make your money when you buy, which means your purchasing price directly affects your profitability. But not only this, as this question also expands to will you be paying in full or will you be taking out a home loan? Contrary to popular belief, foreigners can get a loan in the Philippines. Alternatively, some foreign investors seek a loan from their home country so that they're able to purchase a condominium in the Philippines. However, the loan interest will affect profitability if you're renting out your condo each month, so this is one area to consider. The next category dives into your investment goal. This is asking the big why questions. Why are you deciding this location? 
Why is this condominium better than another? And ultimately, why are you investing? The latter question is the most important. If you're purchasing this condominium for a base or somewhere to live in or for your family in the future, it can be an excellent investment. But if it's solely for financial reasons, this can be slightly more challenging. Many foreign investors have a financial goal to purchase a condominium to later sell in 10 or 15 years. But what many real estate agents don't tell you is that it can be extremely challenging to sell a second or third hand condominium in the Philippines, especially due to the developments and rapid speed of new builds. Think about it like this, as a buyer you could buy a brand new condominium in the Philippines for 2.5 million pesos or a second hand unit for 3.4 million pesos. On the face value it's clear to see which is more desirable. This is not to say that it's impossible to sell a second or third hand unit in the Philippines in the next 10 or 15 years. Of course, if the unit is unique or in an accessible location, it can be in high demand. But the Philippines real estate industry has changed a lot, so this is another area to consider if you're planning to sell long term in the future. The third category involves added extras. These extras can be just about anything, and this includes increased condo dues, taxation, or additional fees your condominium will need, such as insurance insurance. These can eat up at your profits and unfortunately as the real estate market is competitive investors must carefully calculate how much this investment will truly cost them. But there is light at the end of the tunnel and investors both local and foreigners do make money in real estate. This will naturally depend on your investment strategy and the unit. Some investors buy during the pre-building stages to flip once the building has been completed. Other investors purchase multiple units in a popular location and use the power of leverage to become profitable. There are many different considerations and strategies that you can implement to make money in real estate in the Philippines. If you are interested in this, please let me know and I'll do a full video on this topic. So as we know, the ultimate question is, should you rent or buy a condo in the Philippines as a foreigner? If you want to purchase a condominium so that you have somewhere to live or other non-financial reasons, then purchasing a condominium in the Philippines is a fantastic idea. On the other hand, if you're purchasing a condominium solely for financial reasons, this can work out well. However, some investors don't make the money that they expect. So doing your own research is always necessary. Renting a condominium in the Philippines is a topic that we have explored. So take a look at this video if you are looking for some extra resources. Naturally, as I aim to keep these videos short and to the point, we haven't explored every single area of real estate. However, if you have any questions or you wish me to cover a subject in more detail, let me know in the comments below. As an experienced foreigner living in the Philippines, you will most likely have a good grasp of what life is like and perhaps even have your own tips and tricks that you wish to share. So let me know, what tips and tricks have you picked up while living in the Philippines? But for now, let's take a look at seven tips that I would give for expats who are living in the Philippines. Take a look at the ferry prices if you are looking to save. One of the great things about living in the Philippines as a foreigner is that the country is highly accessible in most areas. With over 7,000 islands, the transportation authorities have made accessibility one of their main priorities, including offering several transportation options such as ferries. Flights are often more convenient, but can be more expensive. Thus, if you are looking to save money during your trips around the country, it's recommended first to check out the local ferry prices as there are are some great deals to be had. Naturally, the prices will differ depending on the season and demand. Take advantage of the reward systems. Another advantage for living full-time in the Philippines is that there are several reward programs for regular members and customers. Most likely, you will come across common reward programs such as those found on the Grab app. But Lazada, Robinsons, SM, Smart, 7-Eleven and Vikings all have 
have reward-based systems. If possible, obtain Phil Health Insurance and private insurance. Regular viewers will know that I previously explored the topic of health insurance in the Philippines, but as you are most likely aware, Phil's Health is the national public healthcare system of the Philippines, and even though it's very cost effective, it may not cover you fully compared to private insurances. If you find yourself in and out of hospital frequently, you may find it beneficial to obtain a Phil Health Insurance as well as private insurance. Insurance. This is not something that I have done previously, however, I have heard stories of expats doing this to maximize their protection while living in the Philippines. If investing, choose the Philippine Stock Exchange. After living in the Philippines, you may be interested in financial opportunity in the country. However, as we are aware, there are several scams in the financial world and business and investment scams are extremely prevalent. Therefore, choosing an investment into the Philippine Stock Exchange is often seen as a much safer investment for foreign investors. Keep an eye on your food habits. Filipino food is amazing, but over the years it has got a reputation as being slightly unhealthy. GMO, sugar and unhealthy fats are known to be leading properties of local cuisine. Expats who have lived in the Philippines for many years will likely know just how easy it is to gain a little bit of extra weight and become slightly sluggish after indulging in local cuisine. This is not to say that Filipino food is unhealthy, but foods popular with foreigners tend to be slightly unhealthy, thus it's recommended to keep an eye on this to avoid any ill health. When dating, handle arguments carefully. The great thing about dating in the Philippines is that Filipinos have fire in their soul. But one story I've heard repeatedly from friends and acquaintances over the years is about how difficult it is to communicate with Filipinos during an argument. In other words, tampo. As we know, everybody is different and as much as possible, we try to avoid generalization on this channel. So as a disclaimer, I will say that this is not everybody. But it seems in most cases, if you annoy a Filipina, she will completely ignore you. In the Western world, we often speak about how communication is important for conflict resolution. This is often where the difficulty arises. As mentioned, this is not everybody, but it's interesting just how many independent stories I've come across over the years. Start a side project or a side hustle. This tip for living in the Philippines is not the most essential but if you find yourself having free time and some disposable cash, you may decide to dive into the world of business. Alternatively, you could invest in a small Filipino business. For example, I recently invested in a premium coffee vending machine business. I found this opportunity by using the websites that I mentioned in my latest video where we talked about how to invest in a small Filipino business. If you have some experience living in the Philippines, let us know your knowledge and what advice you would give for first timers in the comments below. So let's take a look at 7 tips for living in the Philippines for the first time. Obtain local health insurance. Healthcare costs in the Philippines are not the most expensive in the world, but they can soon add up and thus, unless you have a large pot of disposable income, it's often a wise idea to obtain local health insurance in the Philippines. There are pros and cons to obtaining health insurance locally rather than international insurance, but mostly foreigners living in the Philippines will find that obtaining local health insurance is more convenient and much cheaper. If you are trying to keep the costs down, one cost-effective option is Phil Health. This is a nationwide project that is open to both locals and foreigners. If you are interested in more information, I would recommend visiting our full guide on health insurance options for foreigners who are in the Philippines. Get hold of an ACR card after 59 days. This small card is a microchip form of identification similar to that of a credit card but can be very useful when living in the Philippines for the very first time. Once you have been set up in the Philippines you will likely have a list of priorities and one of those priorities may be obtaining a local bank account. Mainstream 
mainstream banks will require an ACR card before opening a bank account for a foreign visitor. There are also other benefits of owning such a card. Research the common scams. Scams are incredibly popular in the Philippines and several websites and government announcements have covered this subject in detail. These scams can be anything such as the taxi scam which is common in Manila, the romance scam or the investment scam. These topics have been heavily documented and mentioned previously but let me know if you wish me to investigate a particular scam or cover this in more detail. Arrange a real estate meeting before traveling. One of the best tips I would give for living in the Philippines for the first time is to network with local real estate agents. Of course this is not essential but it can help speed up the process of renting a unit when you arrive in the Philippines. Additionally you will find that different types of agents will have different types of property and therefore networking with a few independent agents often works very well if you are looking to get the process moving as soon as possible. Get vaccinated for COVID, malaria, hepatitis and so on. Vaccines are a slightly difficult topic as not everyone will need every type of vaccine. Before I arrived in the Philippines, I decided to get the latest vaccines. From memory, this was malaria and hepatitis. But similar to health insurance, this is not essential but it is often recommended by medical professionals. Fortunately, some fantastic websites outline what vaccines vaccines you may need when traveling and living in the Philippines and I've added these in the description below. Stay within the cities for an easier journey. When looking at tips for living in the Philippines for the first time, it has to be said staying within the city is a fantastic idea if you are looking for an easier lifestyle. This is because city life is more accessible and there are plenty of options for all different lifestyles within the cities. Living outside of the city or in the provinces is also a fantastic option but if you are brand new to the Philippines and you enjoy your comforts it's often recommended to aim to stay within the cities. From reading the comments I can see that many expats live or are planning to live in Cebu City. There are also some other fantastic areas that you may be interested in such as Iloilo City and Davao City. Have some hidden backup cash. So this morning I published an article about how to live well as a foreigner in the Philippines and the first section described how important having hidden cash is when living in the Philippines. In that article I spoke about when I was 15 and I read a book about life statistics. The book mentioned that on average every 10 years everybody will experience a major traumatic event in their life. This could be a bereavement, a loss of job or even a destruction of a home. And even though this information is yet to be something I have verified, it still stuck with me that just about anything can happen to us and having some sources of backup cash can be very handy in those unpleasing situations. So here are five ways how to earn money as a foreigner in the Philippines. Working with the local embassy. Working with your local embassy is a great option if you have the right skills and qualifications and you wish to earn money while living in the Philippines. The great thing about working with an embassy is that you are situated in the popular areas of the Philippines and you also have many benefits including long-term visa support. Investing in the Philippine stock market. Investing in the Philippine stock exchange exchange can be started with as little as 1,000 pesos. There is a company called COL Financial and they take care of all the domestic tax so that you can legally earn dividend payments from your stock. Rent out your real estate. Buying and renting real estate in the Philippines is a common method for foreigners who are looking to earn money in the Philippines. To maximize profits, most investors advise purchasing at the early stages of a development such as just after the letter of intent stage. Condos are property types that foreigners can own fully, however there are other options available if you're willing to put the property on a business name or a Filipino name. Creating a blog, podcast or YouTube channel. There are many different types of channels. A recent channel that I came across was simply walking around the Philippines and this channel received thousands of views on each video. The videos are great as it shows people what life is like on the streets in the Philippines, but it takes 
it's no skill, so just about anybody can do it. And the good news is, is that there are many content ideas similar to this to choose from. Starting a business in the Philippines. If you are earning money from outside of the Philippines, you will be able to legally start a business in the Philippines much cheaper than other businesses. So these are the five ways how to earn money as a foreigner in the Philippines. If you wish me to cover any subject in more detail or you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I will do a follow up video. Additionally, today's video has not been financial advice and as always we recommend speaking to an independent financial advisor. Legally speaking, a traveller can bring up to 50,000 pesos, which is just under 1,000 US dollars, into the Philippines without prior authorization from the central bank of the Philippines. However, if a traveller wishes to bring more cash, they can do so as long as the currency is not in Filipino pesos. The law states that a traveller can carry up to 10,000 US dollars or its equivalent in other currency in cash. This includes checks, bonds, etc. But if the traveller wishes to bring more than 10,000 US dollars into the Philippines, a written statement must be submitted and approved by the Central Bank of the Philippines. Ideally, a traveller should bring enough cash to support them for the first few weeks. However, if you apply the saving method, which I will mention in a moment, then you will only need enough money for the first five to seven days at most. Nonetheless, budgeting a few weeks is often advisable to be on the safe side financially speaking. This leads us on to the next question of how much money to bring to the Philippines. On average, the living expenses for expats in the Philippines total approximately $1,000 a month. Therefore, if we are aiming for two weeks living expenses, which is the amount of money we are going to take into the Philippines, then this would be around $500 US dollars. However, two weeks living expenses may be an overestimation for some. For example, if you already have your accommodation arranged and you are confident that the majority of costs will be taken care of, then you may be okay with budgeting only a few days or up to seven days. Therefore, a budget of $200 to $250 may be more appropriate amount for your situation. You may also start to ask, well, what is the best way to spend money in the Philippines? The first option we will speak about is cash. Cash is paid to purchase visas, for example, but there are also many other cash expenses when you first arrive in the Philippines. These expenses are why it's often important to bring a little bit of extra cash into the Philippines for any additional costs that may crop up. The next type of expenses include accommodation rental, car rental, internet, electricity bills and so on. These are often expenses that can be paid online, but how do you pay online if you do not have a Philippines bank account? The answer is a company called Wise, which was formerly known as TransferWise. I have spoken about this company many times, as they have literally saved me thousands, and through my research and speaking to other expats, it's clear that they are the best international transfer transfer supplier globally. WISE allows you to send and receive money from anywhere in the world, a few countries excluded, but most Southeast Asian countries are available on the WISE platform, and therefore many use WISE when living in the Philippines. In addition, the currency conversion is often excellent and the fees are extremely low. I won't bore you with all the benefits, but I have included the link to WISE in the description for those who are looking for more information. So what's our plan going to be. The first stage is to apply for a WISE account. This will be extremely handy and even on the rare occasion you decide not to use your WISE account, you still have a borderless bank account which can be very valuable in the future. The second stage is to convert your local currency into Filipino pesos. I would first suggest withdrawing a few hundred dollars and transferring this into Filipino pesos ready for the first few days of living in the Philippines. The third stage is to 
start to use your WISE account to pay for high expenses. This includes paying for the rental deposit and the monthly internet expenses, and at this stage, you can continue to pay for these expenses through cash and through WISE. However, there is a fourth stage for those who are looking to live long-term in the Philippines. And this fourth stage is to obtain a bank account in the Philippines. Previously, I have spoken about how foreigners can obtain a bank account in the Philippines, so I've added the link in the description below. But to summarize, foreigners will often need an ACR card, which stands for Alien Certificate of Registration, and meet the financial requirements. But of course, it's always essential to bring your emergency cards and your bank cards from your home country, which can be used to access your money. But you may find that the fees and the currency exchange are not the best, and therefore using WISE for online payments and or a local Philippines bank account is often the smartest choice. Starting a new life in the Philippines is a fantastic decision, but with change comes questions. Therefore today, we will be focusing on a step-by-step -step guide on what you need to do when starting a new chapter of your life in the Philippines. Stage 1. Find your budget. So the first stage is the most important as it builds the foundation of your journey. Finding the budget essentially means researching and calculating exactly how much you will need when living in the Philippines. On average, most expats spend between $1,500 to $2,000 a month. However, most of the time this does leave a surplus of cash. Therefore, it is possible to live cheaper in the Philippines depending on your location. Aside from the location, your lifestyle in the Philippines will impact your budget. Hobbies, meetups, tours and domestic traveling can all add up. This is why creating a basic budget of how much you will need is always an important step when starting a new life in the Philippines. Stage 2. Arrange flights and visas if necessary. We have covered this step previously, so I won't go into too much detail today. But if you're looking for cheap flights in the Philippines, it's most definitely recommended to check out this video. Fundamentally, arranging flights and visas at your earliest convenience is often the wisest decision. Stage 3. Locate your funding source. This next step focuses on how you will be getting your money each day. If you have a retirement fund or are receiving income from a business or other sources, how can this be used in the Philippines? Opening a bank account in the Philippines is an option, but if you are transferring large amounts of cash from a traditional bank to the Philippines, you may find the fees exceedingly high. This is not to say that opening a bank account is a bad idea, but at the very beginning is not necessarily a priority for most. This is because services such as WISE allow travelers to send and receive money in and out of the Philippines with minimal fees. Additionally, you can request an ATM card depending on the type of account that you have with WISE. In the description below, I've added the full link to WISE and WISE was previously known as TransferWISE. Stage 4. Find your property. In Stage 1, we investigated your your budget. At stage 4, we're also investigating, but instead we turn our focus to real estate. Most travellers find a nice hotel or an Airbnb to stay in for a week or two once they arrive in the Philippines. This allows them to find a nice property within the area. However, you can also find property before starting your new life in the Philippines. There are several real estate property websites in the Philippines, and many agents post their listings on all of these websites. However, looking for the most recent and best deals using Facebook groups is your best option. Many local Filipinos use Facebook when renting real estate and you will often find the lowest prices and special promotions using this method. Stage 5. Get accessible. Once you've found your property and you are in the Philippines, the next stage is to be accessible. As an expat living in the Philippines, you may decide to rent or purchase a vehicle or you may decide to rely on public transportation. Of course, both options have their pros and cons, but ensuring accessibility in your new location is essential for the next stage. Stage 6. Find the essentials. 
So one of the first questions you may be wondering is what are the essentials? While living in the Philippines, I've discovered that many expats from America, Canada, UK, Australia, etc. have essentials that they need while living in the Philippines. Essentials can be anything such as products, services or even buildings. For example, a good friend of mine, God bless him, who's now in his 80s, wishes to live close to a hospital, which is his essential place. Others may choose a gym, a convenience store, or even close to a golf course. What I'm saying is that we all have essentials that are important to us. And when we move to the Philippines, it's important to take this into account during the moving process. 